Hey, happy campers. Todd here, Great American RV Superstores, and today we're going over the operation of a Dometic water heater. Before we go into anything, we want to be concerned about safety. Anytime you go to operate your water heater or any other gas appliance, it's always best to make sure that your CO detector and smoke detector are working properly and that once a year you're getting a gas leak check done on your propane system to ensure you don't have any unknown leaks inside there. Now there's several different styles of Dometic water heaters, but we're going to go over the operation of this particular one and the operation of all of them is pretty close to the same. You may have just gas rather than gas and electric. But like I said, all these steps will coincide with that. Now we're gonna go over the components first, starting off with our pop-off, our pressure relief valve right here. Uh, it is set to a 210 degree Fahrenheit or 150 PSI pressure point. Uh, if the interior ever reaches that 210 Fahrenheit or over the 150 PSI, you will hear this relieve pressure and have some water drip out of here. Now. Uh, you will probably see a little bit of water drip out of here, not blow out or stream out. And that is because the air pocket up at the top of this tank has gone away. How do we get that air pocket back? Well, simply turn off your city water or your water pump, whatever your water source is, go on the interior and turn the hot water on. And that will lower that level inside the tank and you'll get your air pocket back. Now this will reduce over time because that water is gonna to continue to expand. So if you ever start getting that dripping again, just do like we just talked about. Next, we have our gas valve right here that will operate once the gas is initiated. You'll hear that valve open up, the gas will travel through this tube and this igniter will ignite it. From there, you will hear kind of a jet burning noise through here and you will feel hot air coming out of this exhaust. I would don't suggest touching that because it is gonna be fairly hot whenever it operates. Up under our little handle right here, we have a ECO and thermostat. We also have a thermal cutoff. So this thermal cutoff right here hooked to the thermostat, uh, sometimes that can be blown and act like a fuse. Over in the top left corner, we have our control board that operates the system, and that tells that water heater when to turn off and on and what to operate off of, gas or electric. On this particular model here, under this black cover, we have our 110 heating element. And down here at the bottom, we have our drain plug. So that covers all the elements that you would see on the exterior, on the interior. You're not really gonna see much behind it besides a bunch of valves and water lines coming in. Operation is pretty simple. You have one for electric, one for propane, and you turn those switches on, whichever one you choose. If you use gas, it's gonna initiate this gas valve, and like I said, ignite at the igniter and burn. Heating element, you're really not gonna notice a whole lot of operation besides the water getting warmer. It's going to activate this heating element right here and it's going to make the water warmer, right? Both functions, you wanna make sure that you have water in the tank. If you don't have water in the tank, you're gonna burn up your element and that's not gonna be covered by warranty. So make sure that you have water in the system anytime you go to use these. Customers often ask the question, can I use both at the same time? Absolutely, you can. It does heat the water up a little bit quicker. Most people do that whenever you have showers back to back so you don't have to wait as long a period in between. That's no problem with that. Just make sure you turn one of them off after because it's not necessary to have both running all the time. Now, if you have a 30 amp camper, you're gonna wanna use gas mainly. That way you're not overusing your amperage and causing the breakers to trip when you're trying to operate the microwave or air conditioner at the same time. It will help reduce the amount of amperage you're using throughout the camper by using the gas function on that appliance. Now, if we find that our water heater isn't operating, let's say on electric, well, we want to start with our power pole, make sure that our power pole is putting out power, make sure that on our interior, we've checked our breaker panel and made sure that the breakers are not tripped. We also want to make sure that we have good 12 volt power because without 12 volt power, the circuit board is not going to operate. And you want to go over to that 12 volt fuse panel and make sure none of the fuses are blown. This is generally located next to that breaker panel. So these are all three power functions that we want to make sure that are working properly. If we're plugged in, our charging system should be kicking our batteries. And if we're plugged in, our 110 system should be kicking from that power pole. 
gas function. We still need that 12 volts that, for that circuit board to operate and tell that gas function to turn on. We want to make sure that our gas is filled and on. And when we initiate, we'll, like I said, we'll hear that ticking noise and we'll hear it trying to ignite. Now, it may cycle two, three times and it doesn't ignite and then it's going to stall. It's going to go into a fault function and it's not going to try to ignite again until you turn that switch off and turn it back on. So if we've had that happen to us, we might have some air in that system, at which point we want to purge the air out of the lines. So we want to make sure that our propane is on, number one, then go to the interior, turn that stove on, ignite it, and make sure we have a nice, pretty blue flame there. And this should reduce the amount of air that we have in the system. It has a much bigger orifice on the stove than it does right here in the water heater. So it'll purge that air out a lot quicker. Once you've done that, go kick on the gas function of that water heater and you shouldn't have any problems after that. Now, if we've checked all of these options and nothing is working, then we wanna go ahead and bring it into one of the service stations and get it checked out. You can book online or give us a call and make an appointment. Let's go over maintenance. Maintenance is pretty simple on these. We want to blow out this exhaust every now and again and burner tube, maybe once a year, make sure we don't have any dirt divers or wasp nests that are built up in there that can reduce the amount of flow through that system. And that will make you have some soot and everything up here rather than having that nice rich blue flame. We also want to drain our tank once a year and make sure that we don't have any buildup inside this tank that can lead to corrosion inside the tank. So pull that plug, drain it out, and you can also buy these little small wands that you can put in there and flush that system out. It's always a good idea to just keep the city water hooked up while you're draining that tank and that'll help flush it out as well. But you don't wanna let any buildup happen in that tank because like I said, it can corrode and uh, cause that tank to leak at some point in time. And once we drain that tank, wanna make sure we fill it back up, turn your hot water faucet on, turn your city water on, and allow that tank to fill back up before we use it so we don't burn up our element. Last bit of maintenance on our water heater is making sure that we're good and sealed all around the edges of that water heater cover and we don't have any water dripping down, sitting on top that can get into the interior of our unit. We also wanna check our bottom corners and make sure they're sealed there as well and around our propane line right here. That helps us make sure we don't have any bugs going in, but it also ensures that we don't have any fumes go into the cabin of our unit as well. There are bug screens that you can purchase for these appliances, and it'll help reduce wasps and dirt divers from building nests in there. But if it ever causes an issue with your unit, the manufacturers of the units will tell you that they recommend that you pull them off because it re does reduce airflow on that water heater. So just keep that in mind if you ever buy those and your unit's not working properly, just pull that cover off and see if that doesn't fix the problem. We hope you enjoyed our video on Dometic water heaters. Keep watching, click like, subscribe, follow, do all those awesome things on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, wherever you saw us today. And keep watching here at Great American RV Superstores where we bring the how-to to you. Make it